Well, hello. We're back. Uh, I'm going to do a box here. It's going to be a fairly simple box. Uh, just some soft white maple. Be good stuff for Nick to texture and color when we're done. Uh, I do boxes mainly in the Raffin style, so if you've seen Raffin turn, a lot of this might not be uh, real new to you, but we'll run through it anyway. This has been rough turn from green wood, set to dry. This was uh, done, this particular one was done uh, almost two years ago, so it ought to be good and dry, and ready to go. The first thing I'm going to do is take the top, and since it's, green wood's been dried, it's not round anymore, so I'm going to throw the top in the chuck here. That way we can straighten up our fixing here to get it in the chuck to work on the inside of it. I need that back around that way. Get high. I'm just going to take my cue here and just do a quick little peeling cut to clean this up. Then got my that should take care of my dovetail there. We'll just take a quick look to make sure. Yeah, we're cut all the way around. So now I'm just going to take a shearing cut in here to straighten this up and flatten it out so it rests against the jaws well. We get a good hold. You can see how it's jumping around because it's out around. One more cut. You want to just clean up that little bit of fuzz in the bottom. We should be good to go. Okay, so now we can get a good grip on this. At this point, all we're going to do is the inside of it, of the top, clean it up, get it ready and face this area off so we got a nice clean spot and get ready to go down and fit it to the bottom of the box later. So my first cut's going to be just a few shearing cuts to clean this up and to make it just slightly concave. You want to have that slightly concave so that you do the same thing on the bottom of the box so that when they fit together, they fit together out the edge and you don't have a gap. If you try to make this perfectly flat, or you get it convex, you'll have a gap there, and that's what you don't want. So again, just some quick shearing cuts, just to clean this up. One more. Now I'm just going to hold my tool there. I'm a little bouncy there. Let's see what's going on. I didn't quite get all the way to the outside. Oh, yep. Be smart to put that down. All right, here we go. Uh, I got a little aggressive. Come in. All right, we should have a shear cut. I'm going to clean it up a little bit, make it a little nicer with a little scrape from the skew. I don't have to worry too much about inside here. I want to make sure it's out here because we're going to take a lot of this out. So this outer area, which should be when I'm done about an eighth of an inch thick, that's the most important area. See, I'm just lightly scraping across here with my skew. Clean this up. And I've actually got a convex. So we're going to come back, do that shear cut again, see if I can do a better job of it this time.
All right, got it there now. So we'll come back real quick with that scrape one more time just to clean it up. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Now I'm just going to do enough, just enough of a peel cut on the outside of it to get it round. That should be good. I'm going to come in with this scraper to do the inside. Just going to round this out. Remember when you're using your scraper, to have it with the leading edge kind of down, you don't want it here because if it grabs, it's going to snap up on you. If you've got it at a slight downward angle, if you do get a catch, it's just going to pop and not hit anything, and you should be all right. So, just going to start in at the center and work my way out. Just put a little bit of a dome in here. Now you got to watch that you don't take too much out or your top will be too thin when you go to finish it. That feels pretty good. I'm going to stop a minute here. It's always good practice when you're doing something on there that you make sure these nice pointy things are out because I felt just a nick on my elbow there. So now it's out of the way. Now I'm going to come in with this. This is a square nose scraper. It's got an odd angle on it. You see on the side, that's for clearance. This is actually a 90 degree here. I'm going to use this to come in to cut where the bottle is going to fit onto the bottom of the box. And I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room on the outside here so I can do some shaping. So I don't want to go too far over. Thing could be a little sharper. It wants to be kind of grabby. Uh, the other thing is I'm a little, a little low on the rest. There we go. Oh, that's better. Okay, that should be deep enough. I'm going to come back with this scraper and do just a little bit more of a dome in here. If I can clean up that little nib I've left in the middle. I don't want to go with the 400, I want to go with something a little more. Yeah, that's 400 too. I'm just going to take a quick bit of a 220 here just to do a little bit of sanding on the inside of this just to clean it up a little nice. Get it in there. And I'm just going to sand the dome section on this. You don't want to go messing around in here on the flange or this area because you can screw up your fit. If you need to do anything there, it's just a light sanding with some 400 would be the best way to go. So that's good for now. So the one thing I do want to do, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time messing around with this. 
we want to get this done. But I will take these calipers and I'll let them expand into there at the back side. Now I'll adjust them down to where they're just loose and I need them right on that center line. They're just loose and I'll pull back. And I've got just a little bit of play when I get out here, which means it gets wider as it comes out. And you want to have this as close to straight as you can to get a good fit. And the way it's tapered right now, it would be hard to get a good fit. So I'm going to take a quick cut to clean that up. If it tapers in, as you go in, tapers like this, you can make it fit. It's not the best. But if it's tapering the way it is now where it comes out, it'll just get tighter as you go on with the lid, and it'll make it tougher to make the fit. So we'll do one more quick check. And now I've actually got it the other way a little bit. I'm just going to make one more and we're going to leave it go because we don't want to mess with this all day. Let's get it close enough. That'll work. OK, so that's the top for now. We'll come back and finish the rest of it later. Grab the bottom. Start out the same way we did with the top. Mount it in here so we can get our tenon straightened around so it fits good in the chuck. There it is. OK. Oh, that's a bit out. I must not have that in right. Let's make sure I got it in all the way. It is in all the way. It's just that out around. So I'll just lightly take cuts on these peeling cuts here. Get this dovetail straightened out. And then again, shearing cuts to clean up the bottom. I'm going to take a quick shear this way, get the roughness out. Then I'll come back and do the shearing cut down. I'm going to take this quick shear here, get this round to make it a little easier to start that cut. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to peel away. This tent is a little long. I'm going to peel away a lot of it and get it out of the way. All right. And we should be good to go with that now. Get us reoriented here in the chuck. Ooh, almost took too much off. We're good though. I'm just going to clean up the outside of this, get it round for now. Some planing cuts with the skew. If you're not comfortable using the skew, you can do it with a gouge. Either one works fine. I'm not trying to get this perfect at the moment, just get it close to round. That feels pretty good. I'll move my rest up a little closer here. So now we're going to come in, we're going to clean up this 
this section here. Again, you want to have this slightly tapered from the outside to the end so that when the lid fits against it, the outside edges rest against each other with no gap. Oop. Try to take too much of a cut there to start, so we'll take that off. Now we'll come in. That looks good. Spin the tool rest around, do a slight little scrape on here, like I did before. Just get it a little cleaner. Like I said, these areas here you don't want to have to sand, and if you do, you don't want to sand much. Now we're going to rough fit the lid to the bottom of the box. Just want to see what I got here. I'm pretty close in size. So I'm just going to do a quick peel cut. But I'm doing it on a taper. It's going to get narrower as it comes out. And I'm going to take my box and put it up there until it just starts to go over that. There, I'm feeling it's just starting to catch. So now I'm going to do a straight peel cut here down to that area. You'll notice I'm not measuring. If you feel more comfortable, you can measure. We don't want the spigot coming out of here to be any deeper than this. So just be careful. If you do cut it too far back, then you just peel this part down and move on again. But we're getting pretty close there. That looks good. So now I'm going to just lightly work this down to that narrow point where it just started to go on. So we want this to be a fairly tight fit because we're going to be turning on and I've overdone it. Okay. If you've overdone it, you can take a little bit of a paper towel, or I believe as Colwyn and Nick would say, kitchen paper. Yeah. Yeah, or farm industrial wipe, that sort of yep. thing. So I'm just going to, now it's jammed, it's got it jammed on there nice and tight for me. It may be a little bit of an issue to get back off. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to rip away the excess. All right, I'm going to switch over to spindle gouge now to work on the top of this. I'm going to make sure I'm up all the way around so that it spins true. We're looking good. Could you have wet the fibers as well, Keith? Yeah, you could, have put, you could have put some water on there. Yeah. Just a little water to let it swell up a little bit and then probably pop it back on. Yeah. So we're clean. We're ready to go. Okay, so I said this is just a simple box, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a shape on this. Not much. Let's put a slight dome on it. Maybe leave a little bit of a cap there to give, make a little extra fun decorating. Take one more cut in there. All right. We'll put just a little smaller dome here. And 
Nope, I had to get rid of that little hole in the top, so I'll have to come back and make another cut to get that smaller portion back. And it's always a good idea to stop and check your thickness to make sure you're not taking away too much wood, which is what I'm going to do now. And this might be where we might have a little bit of an issue popping this lid off because it went on pretty tight. So let's see if I can get in here and kind of pry it apart. There it goes. Maybe you shouldn't have doubled the paper towel over. Almost have it here. Don't worry about if you ding the edge a little bit because we're going to put a, a little uh, decorative groove there when we're done anyway. So Pretty effective, that paper towel. Huh? Pretty effective, that paper towel. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think when I go back, I'm going to go back with a... Uh, just a single one to make it not tight. Now that's pretty good. I've got a little bit of a hump here I don't like, but I've got plenty of thickness. I think if I take one more cut just to make that a nice smooth arc into there, we'll be in good shape. So let's go with a little less paper towel this time. Yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's much better. Went on a lot easier and will come off a lot easier now. So I've checked my thickness. I know I'm pretty good. Just one more little cut here to clean up that little bump. I think I'll do one more. Still got a, feels a little too high there. There, I like that better. I'll take my skew chisel, just undercut this a little bit. Come back with the gouge just to finish the top off. Take that thickness down a little bit. It looks a little bit bulky up there. And I think that should do Nick nicely. We'll sand that after we get it remounted for him to uh, do the texturing on there. Have to pry it off again. There we go. Now we're going to hollow out the inside of the box. Same process as we did on the lid, only you're going to go a little deeper. You can make the shape of the inside of your box anything you want. Just be careful when you're doing the hollowing, you don't leave a little pointy nib down there. And the only other thing you have to worry about, we're going to jam chuck this to turn the bottom off. And we're going to jam it over a piece of wood, so we're going to have a, sp a spigot going inside of here. So you have to make sure that at least the first eighth of an inch is pretty straight and then behind that kind of flares out or goes out a little bit so that you get a good fit. If you taper this the wrong way or you taper it in like so, it'll never fit perfectly. 
So I've got a little bit more to take out in the bottom to clean it up. That little nub out of there, and then swing it over. And let's see how we feel inside of here. Got a little bit of rough spots down there still, so we'll get in there and work that out real fast. A little bit of vibration because I'm getting kind of aggressive with this. And I'm purposely taking the side out a little farther than the inside of this rim. That feels good. I come back with this square end scraper just to go straight in a little bit to make sure that I'll get a good fit for my jam chuck. Right. Got to come back with this to make it meet up nice. Now Colin, I've been Working away here, is there anything that you might have done differently or? Not really, I'm, I'm more of a fan of gouges, bowl gouges, that sort of thing. So most of my hollowing would have been done with a bowl gouge. Uh -huh. um, but I know Jason, um, one of the other turners back at, uh, at Woodwork and Wisdom, he uses his own brand of uh, box making scrapers himself. So I always yeah. bow to his better judgment anyway. Um, but just through speed turning, really, bowl gouges for me have always done the job, you know? Yeah, I've, but, um, I've tried. I, I find I, I just, I guess I don't do it enough. I'd rather do it this way. It's the way yeah. I learned. What I have started doing, I won't do it today, is I have a small, uh, I forget the name of Michael Mosher told me about it. It's a little, little eighth-inch ring cutter. Yeah. The handle has already got 45s on it, so if you lay it there, and normally I'd have to come in with like 120 to start sanding this. I take that, make two little light passes, and I can start out with 180, sometimes and that, 220. And that, that works, yeah. 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 So I'm just going to do just a quick sand. We're not going to do a whole lot of sanding on this, just to clean it up a little bit. I do find box making fascinating. It's those lovely little collectibles. And you know, the, the, you've got the odd bit of exotic hanging around or something with an interesting grain. It's what a great project we are, i'll be honest we haven't done enough box making i know jason's done a bit but we haven't really concentrated on box making yeah much. i i was fascinated with it was one of the, before i really knew what i was doing i knew i wanted to make boxes yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. and uh i fought my way through a lot of a lot of them and broke a lot of them so i'm just going to jam this back on here now so we can do a little shaping on the bottom make it match up with the top Sorry about that, there went your goggles. All right, we're just gonna do some quick shaping here. Now the one thing I didn't do is check the bottom. Come on. Almost not enough. There you go. You want to check the bottom to make sure when you go to part it off that you don't have a 
the cylinder open down there at the bottom when you're done. <laughs> Not can ring. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to put that in there, check it with my finger, and I'm good. So the actual bottom of the inside is right here. So you want to go about an eighth inch past that, so that's almost to the chuck jaws. So I know where my bottom is now, so I'm not too worried about when I go to finish it, turning the bottom off, or turning through the bottom, I should say. Get this turned down close. One other thing here while it keeps working away. We don't forget we're traveling, we're on the road. I would probably go for something like an OD112, so those OD jaws will throw the project further away from the chuck, just to give your fingers a little bit more room. But something like that would, uh, would, would benefit this project. Okay, we'll do some quick sanding now on the top of this so that Nick will have a nice surface to work with. And I'll do just a little bit down the sides. With a little 220 here. Yeah. All right, Mr. Nick, you can do that, and once you're done with that, I'll finish the bottom off. Righty ho, thanks very much Keith. Might need to have the visor back. <laughs> and uh, uh, on Keith's behalf, I want to, to thank him actually because he, like so many people, did get COVID um, a few months ago and actually been out of the workshop for oh, six months or more. So um, fair play, buddy, considering we'll give you a little bit of cobwebs to blow <laughs> off there, you know, and I know what it's like. Yeah. You know, when you haven't turned for a while to go straight into that as something that is as difficult uh, and, and there's not much room for any error making a box, as you can see. And uh, we all do things a little differently, and it's always good to see. So, appreciate it. And um, that looks like a nice little bit to, uh, for decorate. Now, with a pale piece of wood like this, there is, there's lots of area to decorate, but you can overdo it. You know, the spinning top we just did a moment ago was in your face over the top. But there's, there's sometimes perhaps, you know, as a decorator, maybe... People expect me to cover everything with it. You know, we can leave room to see the wood uh, and, and remember the finishes that we're going to put on also are going to affect um, how that box works, where it's going to get handled. Maybe I want to consider those things. So I'm going to keep this pretty simple. I just do maybe a third of that. Uh, I may leave a gap and put a little detail on the edge. I didn't actually pay too close attention to how thin this was. But I would have said it's not thick, let's put it that way. So we'll find out what Keith left me to do. So <laughs> fingers crossed, this is the, the fun about doing this on the road together, really, you know. I was just gestured at me that it's about this thick. Yeah, right, I hear differently. Okay, so I'm going to move the Taurus back up again. And the thing is, if you have done a box and it's moving a little bit out of shape, um, you can just lower the speed if you've refitted the lid on a jam chuck. Um, then just lowering the speed of the lathe uh, will certainly um, keep up with that ebb and flow if that movement isn't dead true. And this looks pretty good though. There's a little bit of out of shapeness on the top, so we're going to do exactly that. And the other thing, as Colwyn uh, said just now, in case you couldn't hear it over the 
humdrum of the lathe, then given the choice of the luxury of having more jaws, uh, not to have to work up so close to the jaws and having the O'Donnells in their various sizes that allows us to come um, a lot more nearer the bottom because the last thing you want to do is to hit that chuck jaw, isn't it, you know? So there's, there's, there's lots of things you, you, one might change about it and perhaps have a little bit more planning in your box design for waste at the bottom so that you're not indeed using all that material so close. But each to his own. Uh, well done, Keith. Hopefully this is going to work for me. It's nice when people sand the work for you before you come to do it. I like a bit of that, Colin. Do you have a personal sander? Personal sander. Wouldn't that be nice, a personal <laughs> sander? I think uh, we'll write to Axman to see if they can employ a personal sander for you and Jason and, and Ben and Co to speed up the job. I used to have a, a Dutch friend um, who used to come and help me on a Monday in my shop, and he loved sanding. So I said, well, you're going to have half a day in the workshop, do what you like. Uh, if you come and sand some of my pieces, and we did that for a year, that was great. So they are, they are out there. Okay, we'll use the smallest pitch again first. Check my center, it's not too bad, just a tiny bit higher. As I said earlier, gonna rotate this over. I'm just gonna pitch in a little bit of a nub on there. So I'm gonna stay a little shy of that center by two or three mil. Um, we should get something that's a little bit like a flower. I will try and keep my visor out of the way this time. Just going to check that out. I know you can't zoom in. Yes, we've got a nice little flower there. Speeding up just a little. We were on 200 then. We're now around about 4, 450. So if the tool is, is running happily, you almost get a little bit of a hum. I'm just going to give a separation point here. I know we talk about this, but we should stop the lathe before we move the tool rest. And it's hard for, I know for Cohen and myself in the production days, it's a hard thing to stop uh, because you're, you're trying to get things done fast. But we should practice what we preach. Just a little detail with the point of the skew. I'm going to come back in with the larger pitch again on the smaller texturing tool. Upright, one o'clock. Back to upright. And I think we'll Come back in with the skew again. Little line around that. All feels good. Burnish. There's a little bit of a discrepancy with the line because the piece is out of balance, but nothing that's interrupting my eyes. And I think we'll just hit that with the pens and keep it um, pretty simple. So actually over there, is there a black pen or a red pen on that bag, Keith, that you can see? You just a regular, a sharpie. a sharpie, yeah, it'd be fine. And there's a red one there too, I think. Like, I don't know where I've put my... There's a red one in that bag. Okay, so just regular Nick, can I ask a question? Does sure. the speed matter when you're using Sharpies and the die pens? Slow is best, all right, but I don't want it so slow that I get so much ink on the surface that it... Um, it's a great question. The lathe speed, if it's going so fast, two things. It's going to heat the tip of the pen up, maybe damage it more. But if it's too slow, then the die coming or being drawn out of the um, pen, and remember the die pens, it is wood die in a pen. That's why it's called, that's why it's called what it is. It's a die pen. So it's the same stuff that comes out the bottle, but it happens to be in the pen with the chisel, chisel tip on it. So as you, as you have the piece rotating, 
I, I go for a similar speed that we've textured at Colwood. It's an excellent question, you know, two to four hundred RPM just tends to work uh, perfectly. Yeah. As I was saying, too slow, the capillary action of the wood can actually draw uh, the stain and flood into the open fibres of that wood. And it does depend on your choice of material for doing this. So your more open uh, grain woods, like ash, for example, are going to give more of a feathery edge and, and invite that uh, more of a problem. It's a really good point. And uh, my black dye pen has been um, used so much it's run out, so I've just got a regular Sharpie here, which I'm going to use to frame these. Uh, just to put a little bit of a detail around the outside edges, and perhaps one in the middle. We'll stop and have a look. You know, it's as simple as that, really. It uh, makes you look more of a magician than, than perhaps you are, <laughs> have right to be. But okay, so I think uh, as far as finishes, those things need to be discussed. I'm going to get back to Colwyn and Keith with the remainder of this box. Um, but, uh, you know, keep it simple, stupid sometimes. You don't need to do the whole thing. And I will, I'll, I'll see you a little bit later. I have a little bit of microphone swapping to go on and um, I'll be back in a moment. All right. Now we're going to see just how good I did at the bottom of this box. Oh, wait a minute. Almost forgot. Right here where the lid and the bottom meet, we just want to put a little bit of a decoration there. And it's very simple to do. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? All right, I'm going to do something they tell you never to do. Never do something you've never done before. So I'm going to use your skew I've never used before. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't find where I laid mine. But really all I'm going to do, so I'm just going to use it on the side. And I'm just going to go right in to where, that, where they go together. I'm putting just a little bevel on the bottom edge of the top, and then I'm going to flip it around, and I'm going to come in and do the same thing on the bottom. So that's just a little bit to define it. Now we'll take this off, set it off to the side. We're going to make a quick jam chuck so we can turn the bottom off of this box. Where did the... There it is. Oh, nope. First we have to part... I'm going to part that off of there first. And we'll get rid of everything I don't need. I'm going to use a thin parting tool. And I'm going to come in right down here because I know about where my bottom is and I don't want to take off any more than I need to. There. there we go. Now this is just a scrap uh, piece of wood that I have laying around the shop. I make Christmas ornaments and the bulbs sometimes I leave a little extra wood so I've got room to work and I keep them and I use them for jam checks for various things. So that's what we're going to do here with this piece of wood. There's my skew. Found it. Yeah, this was domed for something else. I'm going to do a quick peeling to clean this, make this flat. Just going to waste the wood away. Now 
I'm going to peel in here. Just hold my box up to check it. And again, I'm going to put a slight taper on this so I know where it just starts to go on. And I'm going to flatten this section out. Where the bottom of the box is just going to touch up to it. Alright, that's pretty close. Let's see how she fits. And I just realized that I'm going to take a little bit off of there. As Nick said, I haven't been in the shop a while. Uh, and before I parted the bottom off, I should have come back and finish fitted the lid. And I did not do that. So hopefully because I had to use the paper towel, it'll have a decent fit. <laughs> All right, there we are, we're on the bottom. Now this has a tendency, I don't bring the tail stock up because I want to work all the way to the bottom, to the center of the bottom. So you want to have a good enough fit that it stays on, but that you don't have to really work at it to get it off. And in doing that, a lot of times, you can pull it off if you get a little too aggressive. So you just got to take your time. That tends to happen more often when you're starting your cut in. So now I'm in, I just want to clean the bottom up. And again, I know I've only got about an eighth of an inch down here and I don't want to go more than that, but I do want to make the bottom slightly concave so it sits nice and flat. Before you finish there, Keith, so if I just come in and put a little bit of a decoration on the bottom? Just a decoration. Yeah, that's, that's fine. How that's thick fine. Is, how thick is the bottom? I uh, should be, well, I'll tell you what, it's, we should be able to get it off fairly easy. So. <laughs> I'm only just going to do a small bit. Just so, just it should so. be around an eighth of an inch. You should have plenty of room. Yeah, that's fine. Don't take it off. I'll no, just carry on. Good. Yeah, that, I think you've got plenty of thickness We've there. got plenty of thickness there. All right. Yeah. So I'll get out of your way. All right. Pop that on a good grip as well. So I'm just going to carry on and finish what we're doing here. So I'm going to go straight back to what I know. Well done, Keith. Thank you so much for that. It's brilliant. Already, I'm just going to clean that little nib away, that last little nib. And make sure we're undercut. Keith's done too much of a good job. I don't really have to do anything. I'm just going to come in and steal the glory right at the end. So a little bit of abrasive. It is very slightly dished. It's very slightly undercut, so that's perfect. And that was 220, so let's go 320 now. I'm using the, the small um, decorating tool and we're just going to play around with a few simple patterns. I'm not coming too far out either. There we are, let's just have a look. See what I've got before. There, yeah, just something really simple. I want to put some little dots in there, so what I'm going to do is just bring them up in line, let's go here. That'll do us. I'm going to use blue, blue and orange just on the bottom. So let's just take that away, a little bit of, or a handful of shavings, and then a little bit of abrasive. Go back to the 320 again, remember. I'm going to take Nick's advice, we're going to go down in our speed. It's a bit fast there, so go down a little bit.
I love this because this is the sort of thing you can get the kids involved in. They want to do their first project. Something like this is perfect. We done the, I've been looking on social media the last couple of days and there's a lot of people making the spinning tops, the two part spinning tops that we were making. Um, and so just having fun with all of this, this color. There we are, let's stop that and have a look. Yeah, like that, like that, okay. Well, I reckon that's probably it. Keith, what would we do next? Well, pop her off of there and let's see how our lid fits on it. Let's see here. Like I said, I should have finished fitted this and I forgot to, but we'll see with the paper towel. Oh, it's got a little a bit slight of that, little bit of play. That magic, uh, that magic water in there, maybe yeah. swell that out a little bit. Yeah, but not a bad looking little box. For just, just tell me. Quick. So you you rough these out to start with. You lay them all on the on the, the uh, shelves up there, and you, you give them years to dry to well, let them I, settle down. I usually let let them dry about a year. That way they're should be dry enough so that when you come back to turn them, because I like to get that fit that only wood turners want. You'll see yeah, the wood turners yeah. grab them and go, does it have the suction on it? Yeah. You know? And don't and trust timber. When you see it is um, as air dried or partly seasoned, that and exotic timbers, you buy them from, from wherever you buy them, you cut them and you try and make a box straight away. They will relax, they will dry, there will be moisture there. So it's really, really important that you, you do this rough turning first. It's, it's an important part Even of the Even if I use, if somebody tells me it's a two inch piece of kiln dried, yeah. I'll still rough it and let it set at least six months yeah. before yeah. I come back and finish yeah. them. That way when you make your fit, you've got a pretty good chance of keeping it. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, a little high humidity would probably make them stick some, but. Fantastic. Well, let's just have a quick look at that up on camera. Nice little ring box, little pill box. Well done, Keith. Thank you. Come around, Nick. Um, we're just going to swap around. I want to, first of all, um, just thank Keith for inviting us into his home and his workshop um, for the past couple of days, showing us around and giving us a chance to do a woodworking wisdom uh, from here. So don't forget where we are. We're in Cold Springs, Kentucky. Cincinnati's five miles away from where we are, so we're, we're making our way around. So once again, thank you, Keith. And thank you, guys. I really That's appreciate wonderful. you including me in this, and it's been a joy to have you guys here. Uh, pleasure. And it's not rehearsed. Remember, it's live. <laughs> Catches raw dust, everything. I don't have a microphone on. I hope you can hear me. And uh, again, thanks from us, Keith. Join us on the rest of the journey. Um, where are we going next? Oh, I think it will be through Ohio and all up into Indiana. So keep your eyes open for the next, uh, next installment, wherever it may be from. Don't forget what we always say. I know I'm not in camera, but if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, share us around, tell everybody about us, what we're doing and all those sorts of things. See you soon. Bye-bye.